Hello everyone! In this lesson we are going to finish the implementation of our authentication related features. We are also going to introduce a new type of side effect, an initialization side effect. With this we have our first couple of side effects implemented, login and logout, but we are missing the main functionality that we were looking for, which is surviving refreshes from the browser. So we want to create here an initialization side effect that whenever this class gets created, we want it to read from local storage the user and dispatch it with a login action to the store. In order to do that, we are going to need an initialization side effect. And the convention is to mark it with this name, init$. We are going to mark it already as an effect as well. Now what we need to do is to create an observable that is going to be available when this class gets instantiated. In order to do that we are going to be using a small trick, we are going to be using the RxJS defer operator. So this operator is part of RxJS, this is not an ngRx effects operator. This operator is typically used to wait for someone to subscribe to this observable before creating an observable using this function here. So this function is a function that will create an observable. This operator is great, for example, for promises. If we want to turn a promise into an observable, but we don't want the promise to get executed immediately. Instead, we want to wait for someone to subscribe to this observable before even creating the promise. In this case, we are using defer to create here an observable only when NGRX effects is ready to receive new actions. We don't want to dispatch our action before all the system is initialized. So what do we want to do here? First, we want to go ahead and retrieve the user data from local storage. Let's then do a get item from local storage and we're going to get here the user data. Remember, this at this point is a string. That's the only thing that we can get from local storage. Now let's go ahead and see if we get anything here in user data because let's remember, maybe the user has logged out and in that case, we have cleared this entry from local storage. So we are not sure of having anything in this variable. If we do have something here, then this means that we have here our user data. We can get the data using json.parse and we're going to pass in here the user data variable. So this is our user data. At this point, what we want to do is to send this to the store. The only way to modify data in the store is to dispatch an action. So let's go ahead and create one and pass in here the user data as its argument. Now we could inject here the store and call the dispatch method and that would also work. The whole idea of a side effect is to typically produce an action as a side effect of another action. So in this case, we were using here dispatch false. So here we were not producing any actions. But in the case of init, as the result of initializing the application, we want to produce either a login action or a logout action. So we want to, in either branch, produce an action and we need to return this somehow to ngrx effects. So let's go ahead and return an observable that emits only one value, the login action. We can do that using the rxjs of operator. In this else branch, we are in the case when the user has effectively logged out. So let's go ahead and emit also an action. All the branches that we have here need to somehow emit an action. That's what ngrx effects is expecting if we don't set dispatch to false. Let's then emit here a logout action. And with this, we are almost ready to try out our authentication effects class. Let's quickly fix here a compilation error. We need to call here action.payload.user because the action, the login action that we are getting here, has the user here inside the payload property. Another thing that we need to do is to register ngrx effects here in the root module. Our root module does not have itself 
any side effect class, so we are going to configure for root with the empty array. Even though the root module does not have any side effects, calling for root is essential, otherwise we won't have access to certain services of the NGRX effects module, such as for example the action service. And with this in place, we are now ready to try our authentication effects class. Let's see this in action. So we have here an application that has just started and as usual we are redirected to the login page. Let's now log in the user. We can see that just like before we have dispatched here a login action to the store but now if we head over here to the application tab and if we head over here to local storage we are going to see that we have here a new key on local storage containing the user credentials. Now what happens if we log out from the application? If we log out, this key is being cleared from local storage as expected. So now let's see if this is surviving refreshes, which is the main functionality that we were trying to implement. If we log in our user and we now hit refresh, we are going to see that the user is indeed still logged in. We can see that the login action was dispatched after the NGRX effects initialization action and we can see that the store is populated with the user profile. And with this we can see that our first side effect class is correctly implemented. So let's quickly summarize. When we dispatch here an action using the store, it's typically to report an event, something that already has happened. We are reporting something that happened here in the login component. Now, whenever this gets dispatched to the store, the store is going to react to it. The store will execute its reducers in response to the action, but it might also trigger side effects, like it happened here. So in this case, as a side effect of the login action, we are storing some data on local storage. The key thing with the store implementation is that when we are dispatching an action, we are not giving a command to the store telling the store what it should do with the action. It's the store that is going to react to the action, it's the store that is going to decide what side effect gets triggered in response to the action. The component dispatching the action is essentially dispatching an event, something that has happened in the local scope of the component. The component does not know about other components on the application and what those components are doing with the store information. It simply knows about the store from which it collects the data via selectors and it reports events back to the store using actions. As you can see there is a lot to the store architecture and some of these things are easy to get wrong. In order to help us get the store architecture right from the beginning, let's have a very useful development tool which is NGRX Store Freeze. 